A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. The eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain which Jesus had ordered them. And when they saw him, they worshipped, but they doubted. Then Jesus approached and he said to them, All power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you, and behold, I am with you always until the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. And let us begin appropriately in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Father Francis with you on this wonderful feast of the Holy Trinity. The Holy Trinity. And when I come to this wonderful feast, there's just so much that you could say about this great, this great mystery. And to some extent, I think there's a, although, you know, probably theologians have spilled literally oceans of ink on this, probably this great mystery, um, it's inexhaustible. And there's always something more that you can say about the Holy Trinity, or even more importantly, that the Holy Trinity will reveal about himself. One God and three divine persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. So um, this homily I want to talk about, um, again, we'll talk a little bit about the, the Holy Trinity, uh, but I'm going to kind of talk about three things that uh, are Trinitarian. They have a, the, the format of this video is gonna be Trinitarian because I'm gonna talk about three specific things, you know, three unique things that are, that might seem kind of a, a bit disjointed, but yet I think they have a lot to do and they have a lot in common. Um, and in fact, it may be to some extent, it might even answer some questions that some people that watch my videos from time to time might wonder why I say the things that I say or talk about the things that I talk about on kind of an ongoing basis. So maybe uh, there will be some clarification that might help some people perhaps in this video. But so it's gonna be kind of a Trinitarian format as I talk about three kind of specific things. And then we'll kind of get to the, the maybe the, the end of what I'm really trying to, you know, how it all ties into the actual mystery of the Holy Trinity. So I hope that kind of makes sense a little bit. Um, so the first thing I want to talk about, um, and you might say, what does this have to do with the Trinity? And again, I, I hope, hopefully you'll stay with me till the end. But um, maybe to begin, you know, again, the, the understanding of the Holy Trinity is about the mystery of God himself. And how do we relate to this great mystery we call God? Boy, talk about the $64,000 question and it's interesting today because I'll say this, as on one hand, you see a lot of very uh, anti-God, anti-Christian, anti-religion people that seem to be just welling up in rage and anger and trying to denounce and, if you will, stifle and quelch um, people who are believers. Um, what I find also fascinating is on the other hand, there are a lot of people who are beginning to start to ask some really fundamental and very uh, probing questions about the nature of God. You know, and how do we, you know, what, who is God? You know, not what is God, but who is God? Um, has he revealed himself? How does he reveal himself? How do we relate to this God? And so... Uh, again, it's, 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 it's very encouraging to me to see people like, say, Dr. Jordan Peterson, who is in some ways kind of trying to unwrap the mystery of God's, you know, enigmatic love, um, not just from a, an intellectual perspective, but from a personal perspective. He's gone through some horrendous health issues. Uh, his wife, Tammy, has just... Uh, gotten through it looks like a really horrible bout of cancer that should have killed her last year in fact dr jordan peterson was in a in a siberian hospital last year at this time 
uh, trying to get through a, um, a benzodine um, addiction, uh, which wasn't pleasant. It almost killed him. But again, it's, it's, it's people like that uh, and other people that are beginning to start to question that, you know, maybe we were too quick to try to, you know, get rid of God from uh, society, get rid of God from, you know, the, um, the, the political, if you will, sphere as well, as, as well as the secular sphere. So it's, 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 in many ways, it's encouraging to see notable people trying to come to a, a realization of who God is. So that's, in one hand, it's very, very encouraging. And yes, there are angry people out there that uh, are very uh, vociferous about with their anger towards Christianity and they want to blame Christianity on all sorts of society's ills. But I think for the most part, by and large, most people just aren't really paying attention to them. Uh, they're just kind of throwing a big temper tantrum. And unfortunately, it's a very uh, dangerous temper tantrum. But I think most people... Uh, are on the other camp that are very open to talking about the, the nature of God. And that's what the Holy Trinity is really all about, the nature of God. So, I, I kind of, that was my introduction. I hope that didn't, wasn't too verbose. Uh, but the three things that I want to talk about that uh, might not seem very much related to the topic of the Trinity are, are these. One, one thing that I have to say is that we, we, we understand the Trinity, the mystery of the Trinity, uh, from our orthodox understanding, you know. And what I mean by orthodox, of course, you know, again, I, I think sometimes people are a little are hesitant to, to use that word. Uh, a lot of us as, as Western Christians kind of don't know what orthodoxy is. But, but many of the great doctrines and dogmas and, and understandings that we have come from orthodoxy and, and, and Catholicism, again. But, but again, what, what we mean by orthodoxy is, you know, right belief. And unfortunately, there are people in our church today who should know better than to tamper with orthodox belief. Case in point, my first point. Uh, there is a cardinal in New Jersey, and he has taken upon himself to change the Hail Mary prayer. And it goes something like this. Well, it doesn't go so, it goes like this. He's, he changed the Hail Mary prayer to say, Hail Mary, full of grace, good so far. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of your womb. Jesus, pray for us, blessed mother. Help us to love God and all our sisters and brothers with generous and joyful hearts. What? Now, some of you were saying the Hail Mary with me, and you got to the second part. You're going, what, 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 wait a minute, you, you, who, you, who changed that? Why? Again, he has reduced or eliminated Holy Mother, uh, uh, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord's with thee, blessed art thou amongst women, blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus, Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. He eliminated that part. He got rid of referring to Mary as holy. He referred to, uh, got rid of the reference to us sinners and also to uh, death. Pray for our sinners now at the hour of our death. Those three vital important things that we need to be praying for each and every day as we acknowledge the holiness of our Blessed Mother. Uh, just the other day we celebrated uh, Mary, the mother of the church. Now, to be fair, I was going to say, well, maybe, maybe, and I did a little bit more reading on this, maybe this is a personal private devotion that this cardinal feels that, well, you know, I'd like to say this prayer. And you're free to say any prayer that you want. You're, you're free to, you know, um, pin, if you will, a, a devotion. You know, if you have a special, a special devotion, and you'd like to put that into a form of a prayer, nothing's stopping you from doing that. But the problem is that this cardinal believes that he has the authority to change the centuries-old, the millennium-old prayer of the Hail Mary. Why? And who gave him the authority to do that? And I guess in his diocese, he's making it binding that instead of saying the traditional 
uh, Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now at the hour of our death part. We're eliminating that completely and we're going now with pray for us, Blessed Mother, help us to love God and all our sisters and brothers with generous and joyful hearts. Blah, 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 okay? Now, forgive me for being a bit cynical, but this is the problem with the church today. We want to strip our liturgy, our devotions from any sense of sinfulness or death or final judgment or anything of the divine or holiness. Those things upset these people. And I, and I think part of the reason why is because it convicts them. The Holy Spirit convicts them. It could, should convict all of us. You know, um, we should all be somewhat a little bit convicted when we say the Hail Mary prayer because we recognize that we are sinners and we are going to die and that we are, we are asking for the intercession of Holy Mary, Mother of God. No reference to her being Mother of God. No reference to her holiness. So, again, some of you wonder why I kind of pick on these, some of these people. Well, this is the reason why. They're changing our Orthodox teachings, our Orthodox Catholic teachings, uh, because they don't like them. They're uncomfortable with them. So what do they do? Instead of trying to conform their sinful lives and change, they're trying to change things that upset them. You know. Point number two. Again, you've seen me kind of attack, or not maybe attack, but uh, uh, criticize. That's fair. Criticize this priest, James Martin, uh, because he, again, wants to change the teachings of the Catholic Church. He believes that the catechism of the Catholic Church, when it talks about same-sex attraction being disordered, and should never be permitted or never be tolerated is wrong. He thinks, I, I don't know if he actually said the word evil, but he thinks that that part of the catechism should be clearly obliterated. Why? Because instead of helping people with same-sex attraction, uh, he wants to confirm them. He wants, to, he wants them to feel good about that. And, you know, I, I, I gotta tell you, now this is something that I wasn't going to say, but I'll say it now. Uh, I've been noticing that a lot of the, I'm seeing a lot of videos now about the new ex-gay movement. Now, there was an earlier uh, attempt at this, but the LGBT uh, propagandists kind of got on that and quelched it. Ask yourself this question, how come we don't hear about those AIDS quilts anymore? In fact, you don't hear anything about AIDS anymore, do you? Again, anything that's going to challenge their movement, uh, let's, I guess the pride thing comes up next, next month, and you'll be seeing rainbows and you know, all these other perversion things being put on display for the whole world to see. They have no shame. And, uh, but uh, they try to quench these, these things. But I'm, I'm, I have to tell you, uh, a lot of there's, and, I, and I'm so happy to hear this, not because I, I don't like quote unquote gay people, I have nothing against gay people, but I do feel that it's not right to, to, uh, to sequester or to, um, to, to silence programs that can help people. Uh, it's very much like Alcoholics Anonymous or NA, Narco, Narco, uh, Narcotics Anonymous or Overeaters Anonymous or Gamblers Anonymous, you know, the 12-step programs, you know, and uh, because they, why? they help people come out of very um, debilitating addictions and uh, disoriented things that are, that are not good for people. And, and unfortunately, you know, again, we live in America and you choose to, you choose your lifestyle. And okay, that's, that's between you and, you know, no one's going to, you know, tell you you can't do something. But we might question and say, is that, really a, is that really the best thing that you can do? And so to outlaw, which in many places they have done now through their uh, politically correct legislatures, oh, well, you can't have conversion therapy because that's bad. Well, why is it bad? Maybe it's not for you. You know, one, this, one guy was you know, really uh, making a, he was really being very cynical and snarky and saying, well, oh yeah, pray the gay away. Oh, well, I know there's lots of people now that are coming out, uh, coming out fully of the gay lifestyle and they're leaving it. 
and they're they're because they're 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 they're, they're being. Uh, one person said, you know, not born that way, but I'm being born again. You know, I'm not focusing on being born that way, meaning they were gay, but now they're being born again. Amen. So, but Father James Martin, Pastor Jimmy Martin, as somebody calls him, um, you know, he basically wants to encourage people to stay in their sinfulness. That's wrong. That's wrong. And it's wrong when you want to say the church is wrong. I know better than the church. You know, changing this Hail Mary prayer, saying you know better than the catechism of the Catholic Church, those things are wrong. And they need to be challenged. You need to stand up and say, sorry, Eminence, sorry, Father, but you're wrong, okay? And it's not me saying you're wrong, it's the Catholic Church that's saying you're wrong. And you're supposed to represent the Catholic Church. And the third thing I wanna talk about, it's kind of uh, been on the radar now the last couple of days, uh, talking about somebody who does defend the Catholic Church and quite boldly is a, a, a wonderful priest named Father James Altman, Father James Altman from uh, the Diocese of Wisconsin, I think it is. And, and sad to say, Father Altman uh, is being asked, I wanna get the words right here, he's being asked to resign as pastor of his parish. Now, as a pastor, I have to say, what a heartbreaking thing to happen to you, to have your bishop say, I really want you to resign. I really want you to quit. Ouch. Ow, man. That's, whoa, <laughs> it just hit me. It just is such a painful slap in the face. And yet, knowing Father Altman, he would probably gladly receive that and in, in recognition of the slaps that Jesus received on his face. So um, this priest is a good priest. I wanna say that he's never, he's never sought, to the best of my knowledge, he's never sought the recognition. Now, what I'm gonna about to say now is gonna maybe upset some of you, but I think we all need to think about it because the problem is that had Father Altman just kind of been able to just do I say fly under the radar? In other words, just, yeah, he, was, he became very well known, especially through the COVID pandemic um, because of his homilies. They're, and they were very truth-oriented homilies, very pointed homilies. And yes, uh, they, weren't, they weren't for the, the faint of heart, <laughs> but they were filled with truth. And, and I think, yes, we do, we do need to hear the truth because we do have, unfortunately, some people in the church today who are altering the truth and they're doing a little shell game. They're, they're kind of a little sleight of hand, you know, uh, saying things like, well, there's a reasonable hope that all people will be saved or that Jesus Christ is the preferred way to get to heaven. And other, there, but there are other ways to get to heaven. I don't remember Jesus saying that. You know, and, and so, um, you know, and this is something I was thinking about this morning is uh, poor Father Altman's a lot like, you know, uh, the great uh, Venerable Fulton Sheen, Archbishop Fulton Sheen. Um, the thing is that the, the hierarchy in the Catholic Church, they don't like it when people kind of rise up from the grassroots. Um, you know, they, if they're not promoting you, then they don't want you basically opening your mouth. You just shut up and do your job. Um, and the problem is that, you know, with Fulton Sheen, he got, he, he was, I guess Cardinal Spellman was extremely jealous of his notoriety, you know? And again, if you've ever watched uh, or listened to a Fulton Sheen uh, teaching, uh, tape, uh, video, they're, they're tremendous. Uh, I have to say that I was probably completely formed as a, as a neophyte Catholic, neo-Catholic, uh, new Catholic, in my first year or two uh, before I went to the seminary by listening uh, assiduously to all these Fulton Sheen tapes. Somebody gave me a whole collection, like 50 some odd tapes. And I just remember driving from, you know, wherever I was driving from and popping in one of those tapes and on my morning commute or on my morning commute back to wherever I was going, mostly from college and stuff or my, my, my first teaching job, I would listen. I was always listening to Fulton Sheen tapes and a little bit of Gregorian chant thrown in just for a good measure. And, uh, but I think I was perfectly formed by hearing those, those tapes. Unfortunately, when I got to seminary, 
that's when my eyes were kind of open and I realized these people were wanting to change the faith. And it really alarmed me. I go, what's going on here? But I was too far gone and they kind of knew it. They, they tried to kick me out uh, every year. They tried to kick me out and they basically told me. And this is even long before I learned the Latin mass or, you know, kind of certainly before YouTube, back when I was in seminary, back in the pre-Devonian period, early Devonian period. Um, the thing is that, you know, I knew what the Catholic faith was. I embraced it totally. And uh, they didn't like that because they wanted, they were already in this process of de de uh, dismantling uh, the uh, Orthodox Catholic faith and trying to substitute it with a new, a new version of it, which we're seeing even now more so than ever. So I would say that to some extent, although Father Altman did not seek uh, recognition, I think, unfortunately, and I understand how some lay people, and they love him, and they, they want to do everything they can to help him, and, the, and they should. But I'm, I'm going to ask a question. Maybe, maybe they were too quick to promote him, uh, to call attention to him. And maybe if they had just kind of like, you know, let's just let this guy do his job. And isn't it great that he preaches the truth on Sundays? And, you know, let's not let's not make a let's not make a spectacle of, you know, let's not call attention to him, undue attention to him. Because I think that's what happened is that and again, I hate to say this, but the hierarchy, they get very jealous. They get very threatened. And uh, perhaps if father had not been promoted by so many people, and you know, kind of was making not a name for himself, but other people were promoting him. Uh, maybe he wouldn't be in this situation. Maybe he'd still be. It wouldn't be an issue right now. Is what I'm trying to say. Uh, the Catholic Church is a funny institution, and again, when <laughs> it's like the old saying about a bucket of crabs, when one tries to climb up out of that bucket, the other ones are going to grab him and pull him back down. And and I am afraid. I'm afraid that that's kind of what's happening to Father Altman. Uh, you know, again, no fault to him, uh, but unfortunately, I think uh, we might want to take a lesson from that, lesson learned, and, you know, instead of, you know, putting a, a priest up on a pedestal, and I'm not saying he's not a good priest, I, I'm sure, I know he is, he's, he's a good priest, he's an excellent priest, holy priest, but, but unfortunately, now we made him a target, and, and now he's going to, there, there's, there's going to be re repercussions, so I'm just saying, you know, maybe, you know, the next time somebody kind of rises up a little bit, maybe not try to promote them so much because it's only going to cause them more, more problems. And again, you know, you take out a good priest like that. And now you're not just taking out a good priest, you're taking out a pastor. And, and those people need a good pastor. And who knows what, what they're going to replace him with. So anyway, our prayers go out for him and say a rosary for him. Uh, you know, so that's all I can say about that. So getting back to you know, the, the conclusion of this whole Trinitarian um, homily is that um, you know, when we look at this mystery of the Trinity, we see this magnificent image of God. You know, it's mysterious, yes. It's unfathomable, yes. It's even almost indefinable, yes. But we recognize that this image of God is, is placed on every human soul, but because of sin, it's marred and it's disfigured. And so usually what you try to do when you, you know, when something is marred or disfigured, uh, you try to re-mint it, you know, and you try to, you know, say, okay, let's, let's, uh, let's, let's try you know, allowing the power of the Holy Spirit, though, to refashion God's image, His holy image, within our hearts and souls. You know, we, in our own ways, we're kind of Trinitarian. You know, we, we have, you know, a body, a mind, and a soul. And in many ways, you know, it's sort of like we have to stop and, you know, kind of peel the onion back layer by layer to realize how complex and intricate and yet beautifully and wonderfully fashioned um, that we are and that you know it just like there's you know the three persons of the holy trinity you know there's 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 facets to us that we need to completely surrender you know we need to humble ourselves and surrender our intellects you know there's a lot of people out there that think they know better than the church all i can say is god have mercy on their souls 
Um, you know, there are, are people out there that, you know, instead of trying to lovingly challenge people with the gospel, they're trying to encourage them in sin. And uh, sadly, there are people that are trying to tell the truth, but they're being silenced, you know. So, you know, again, we have to realize that we have to surrender this intellect of ours. We don't know it all. You know, I'll tell you one thing. If anything I've learned this year is that, you know, the, the Christian faith is, is, is multifaceted. It's, there's, there's so much to learn. And I, I've only scratched the surface when I think about it. Um, and then, you know, there's the, the, the you know, if, the, if our intellects don't get us into trouble, our appetites do, you know. And, you know, we have a propensity for pleasure. And uh, the problem is, it's so interesting, is, you know, if one piece of chocolate cake is good, the whole cake is even better. Or maybe two chocolate cakes are better than that. I mean, it's just a weird way we're wired. You know, and our appetites are, if our intellect doesn't get us into trouble, our appetites get us into trouble. And if that wasn't bad enough, we also have the emotional part of our lives, you know? And a lot of us, you know, we get into trouble with wanting to be connected with, you know, it's, 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 it's I think it's that, that unity thing, which is also in, uh, exemplified in the unity of the Trinity, but to, be, to be one with some, someone, to be, to, be, to be known, you know, and to know another, okay? Th and that's all, that's all God-given. But there are appropriate and natural and holistic and good ways to express that and experience that. And then there are destructive ways. And so, unfortunately, a lot of people today are, subs are, are, set are, are settling for the destructive things that don't really bring you true unity and wholeness. You know, whether you're, you're sur surrendering yourself to a perversion or a chemical or just, you know, just a bad a bad lifestyle, that's going to get you into trouble too. So that's why when we look at our Trinitarian selves and ourselves, our body, mind, and spirit, we have to be willing to surrender all of that so that the beauty of the Holy Trinity can be reminted and that divine image can be imprinted upon our souls once again. Well, I hope you got something out of that this week. May God bless you today and every day, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen.